Hi there, my name is Drew Betts. I'm a wireless customer support engineer at the Technical Assistance Center at Cisco. Today we're going to be discussing the installation of third-party SSL certificates for guest access on the Cisco wireless LAN controllers. Let's go ahead and get started. In today's presentation, we're going to cover why do we need a third-party certificate installed on WLC in the first place. We'll also cover a step-by-step -step guide on how to install OpenSSL on Windows XP, create the CSR using OpenSSL, then chain the certificates together, install them to the WLC, and then also finally DNS considerations uh, when deploying your guest clients. Finally, we'll wrap it up with some troubleshooting steps and common failures along with an FAQ. Um, I have also created a step-by-step -step video tutorial of how to run through this process. That's going to be in part two of this presentation. So let's begin with an overview. Why do we need SSL certificates on the WLC in the first place? Well, there's an internal HTTPS server on the WLC that's enabled by default for web administration, that's the web GUI, and web policy for web authentication and web pass-through. And the reason for this is that we want to ensure that credentials exchanged between the client and the WLC are encrypted. This becomes critical when deploying guest WLANs, as many times these are open WLANs with no layer 2 encryption, so we have to have some method to protect the credentials for those guest users with web authentication. The main problem here is that the end users receive a security warning when they trigger that web policy page on the WLC. And the reason for that is that a self-signed certificate is installed by default on the controller. So our solution is to deploy a third-party certificate signed by a public certificate authority. And in that case, the end user will have a seamless experience as that certificate that's signed by a public CA will be able to validate against a root certificate installed on the client's machine. So in this presentation, we're going to outline the steps required to install a third-party chain certificate for web authentication at WebPasser, which is the most common. All right, well, let's go ahead and cover the WLC requirements. So we do require having wireless controller code 5.1.151.0 or higher. So this will include the 5.2, 6.0, and 7.0 trains of code, along with any future versions coming out. Now, OpenSSL 0.9.8 is required, and 1.0.0 is not compatible at this time. You'll find that you may be able to run those OpenSSL commands that we mentioned later on in this presentation. However, the certificate will not install to the wireless controller successfully. So save yourself a little time and install 0.9.8. Now there are many different flavors um, with different letters at the end there. I found that most flavors seem to work just fine, so as long as they're 098. Now the wireless controller does support up to level two certificates, and a level two cert is a device, an intermediate, and a root certificate all chained into one. Now currently we do not support a level three certificate, which just adds in a co-intermediate. So that's a device, co-intermediate, intermediate, and then root certificate. Now we do have that bug ID there you see on the screen. We're tracking in the TAC. Uh, this one's a feature request, an enhancement request, to see if uh, we do have a need for that level 3 certificate support and if we can get that committed into future versions of code. More than likely, we'd see this in a new train of code, such as 8.0, um, to be able to support this uh, feature. And finally, our wireless controller support 1024 and 2048 bit certificates. Now, be sure to ask your certificate authority what certificates will be provided in the chain to save yourself some time. This is a critical question, and uh, many times we find that we run these level 3 certs, which just aren't compatible on the wireless controller. So make sure you have a level 2 cert before proceeding. So step 1 here is going to be to generate a CSR using OpenSSL 0.9.8. So first step we have to do is install and open the OpenSSL application. Uh, there's a link on this tutorial where you can download uh, new Win32 for Windows uh, 0.9.8. Now, once we get that opened, we'll issue the following command, which is going to create a CSR file for us that we can give to our certificate authority. Now, you can create, as I mentioned, the 1024-2048 bit request. Just to swap out that 1024 if you want a 2048. Now, in step three, be sure to provide the request information, including the common name. And the common name must match the DNS host name on the virtual interface of the wireless controller. This is how we can perform the validation. That would be the fully qualified domain name. So for example, it might be wifi.yourdomain.com. Once complete, you should have two files created. The myrequest.pem file, this is the request that should be sent to the certificate authority, and then the mykey.pem file, which is the key file which will be used later when the certs arrive back to us. Be sure to keep both files. Okay, great. Now that we have the myrequest.pem file and the mykey.pem file, we can proceed on to step two here, which is to obtain the certificates from your certificate authority. So you'll need to log into your CA's web portal and provide the myrequest.pem file 
when creating the new certificate. Now, if you use an optional password in a CSR request, be sure to provide that password to your CA when you're creating the certificate. Otherwise, the chaining process is going to fail. Now, for step two, your CA will notify you when your certificate is ready and provide a method for download. They may email it to you, or you may have to log into the portal manually. The key thing is here that we want to, on step three, obtain the device certificate, the intermediate certificate, and the root certificate. Sometimes a CA may provide only the, de the device and intermediate cert, so you'll have to take a look and uh, take a look at the support pages, maybe the help pages, to find the root certificate used. Oftentimes, I'll uh, have to contact the CA tech support to get this information, so you may just want to give them a ring as well. Great, so now once you have all three certificates, copy and paste the contents into a new file as follows. So this will be a new text file. We're going to paste the device certificate first, the intermediate CA cert, and then the root CA certificate. We're going to save all of the files as all-certs.pem, and then we're going to store it in the OpenSSL bin folder. And we want to take the mykey.pem file and then this allcerts.pem file and put it in that bin folder. After you do that, continue on and choose OpenSSL via the command line and issue the following commands. So first thing we're going to do is take that allcerts.pem and we're going to convert it into an allcerts.p12 file. Once we do that, we're going to convert that allcerts.p12 file into the final cert.pem file. Now you'll see here that we have a pass in and pass out file, which currently is check one, two, three. You can feel free to change that password. Just make sure that's the same for pass in and pass out. Now this password will be used when installing certificate to the WLC, so make sure you note that one. Now if all is successful, you will have a file called final-cert.pem. Take that file and we're going to move it over to your TFTP root directory. Now in step four, we're going to download that final-cert.pem file to the wireless controller. So open up your TFTP server and then make sure that our file is within the root directory. We'll log into the WLC via the web GUI and we'll go to the security tab, choose web auth, and then certificate. There is a checkbox there that says download SSL certificate. Check that box and then you should see the prompts below. We'll drop in the IP address of the server. We can leave the maximum retries and timeouts the defaults. Include the file path there, and if you're using the root of the TFTP server, that's simply going to be a forward slash. We'll include the file name, and then also that certificate password. So that's going to be that password used for the pass in, pass out on the previous slide. When everything's done, choose apply in the top right hand corner, and then that will begin the installation process. Okay, great, we're almost done. So now that we have the wireless controller certificate installed, we need to press on to ensure that we have the DNS validation of the common name on the certificate. So step one here is that we need to configure your WLC's virtual interface host name so that it matches the common name found on the certificate. A reboot is required whenever you change that host name, so please keep that in mind. Um, many times I try and install the certificate and change the virtual interface's host name at the same time, so you only have to reboot the controller once. An example of that uh, fully qualified domain name that you would use for the common name field on certificate would be wifi.widgetworks.com. Now the second step here is to ensure that your client's DNS server has an A record pointing to this wifi.widgetworks.com that's going to resolve to your virtual interface IP address, which is typically 1.1.1.1. You can see that example below. Now normally we have three options when deploying DNS uh, validation here for the common name. Uh, the first option is to use an external DNS server, so public DNS for your guest clients. Um, this is usually the most preferable option as you don't use your internal resources on the network. The key thing here to note is that we must have a public A record on your domain's uh, externally facing DNS server. So for example, in the case of Widgetworks, we'll want to make sure that wifi.widgetworks.com can be resolved over the internet um, using a public DNS server rather than our own internal DNS server. Now, the second option here is that you can use the internal DNS server within your enterprise for your guest clients. In that case, it's very simple to deploy. You just set up an A record and then you point that to 1.1.1 or whatever your virtual interface IP address is. And then our third option, of course, would be to deploy a DNS server out in the DMZ for those guest clients. So that way you have a dedicated server that simply resolves that hostname and then kicks all the other DNS requests out to the public domain, uh, DNS servers. Okay, so let's say you run into a few hitches along the way. Well, I've got a few troubleshooting tips that should help you out. So uh, the first thing is that if OpenSSL does not generate that all-certs.p12 file or the final-cert.pem file, you can verify a few things. First, make sure the all-certs.pem file has the certificates in the following order. 
the device, the intermediate, and the root. It's important that these certs are in this order or the validation process will fail. Also make sure to verify that the my key file is the same one that was used with the original CSR file that was sent to the CA. Many times I'll see that customers will create a new CSR, maybe there was a typo in the original, but then use that original my key file. Well, that's not going to work. So we need to make sure we have the latest my key file. Finally, make sure that uh, if you did provide an optional password in the CSR request, that you provide that password to the certificate authority when, when providing the myrequest.pem file. If you don't provide that password, then OpenSSL will likely fail. Now, if the certificate fails to download to the wireless controller, you can do a few things. Uh, first thing is to run the following debug, which is going to be debug transfer all enable. Um, that'll show you the state machine on the wireless controller, um, where we are as far as downloading the cert, if that downloaded off your TFTP server successfully, and then if we were able to install it to the controller. So this can also shed some light on any issues. Now, also verify that the pass in slash pass out password is used when downloading to the wireless controller. So if you change that check one, two, three, make sure that you insert that into the password blank when downloading to the controller. And then finally, if you installed the certificate successfully, you got through OpenSSL, no problem, but then when it's installed and you're testing out your client, you still receive a security warning after a successful install, make sure that uh, you can browse to the web policy page. And once you do, you should see a little SSL lock icon, or sometimes in the later browsers at the top of the page. If you double click on that icon, you should be able to view the certificate details and then the certificate chain. Um, here we can take a look at the chain and see where the certificate is failing. So you should be able to see a device and intermediate and commonly we'll see that the root cert may have a little X by it and that will indicate that either the root certificate is not installed on the client machine or perhaps there's something going on with their chaining process. Maybe the certs are out of order. So those are a few things to consider when troubleshooting. So after working an attack for a while, uh, we do receive many questions from customers regarding this process. I've covered a few here um, that are very helpful and should benefit you in the long run. First one here is that, can I install the same certificate on multiple wireless controllers? Well, sure, you, you can. Uh, you need to make sure, though, that the virtual interface IP address and the host name are the same on all the WLCs. And since our virtual IP should be the same on all controllers anyways, this one's pretty easy. Now, if I'm using a guest anchor WLC, uh, where do I need to install a certificate? Well, if you're doing auto anchor mobility, you can go ahead and install that certificate to just the anchor controller. You don't have to worry about installing it to the foreign controller, which is kind of handy there. Now for the third question is, how about my company has a wildcard SSL certificate? Uh, can I use this with my WLC? A wildcard cert is going to be one that has star.mindomain.com. So anything in that initial portion uh, can be used and that helps with certificate validation. Um, yes, we do support those certs. However, we must ensure that it's a level 2 certificate or lower. So many um, wildcard certs I've seen are level 3 or level 4, which would not be supported currently with the wireless controller. And then our final question here would be, uh, my certificates are not in that .pem format, so can I convert these? Yeah, you sure can. Um, you just need to use either OpenSSL, uh, and you can find the commands online if you do a simple Google search for converting certificates with OpenSSL, you can find that. Or you can go to a nice tool, which is on an external website. It's going to be ssl.shopper.com slash ssl-converter.html. This concludes part one of our presentation. Please click the link in your browser window for a step-by-step -step video demonstration of the installation process. I'd really like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this tutorial, as well as for being a valued Cisco customer. Now feel free to leave any feedback or questions in the comments section below, and I'll be happy to answer. Take care.